Raggy dolls were playing up in the treehouse. Dotty says, do this. And she quickly folded her arms. All the raggy dolls did the same. Hmm, said Dotty, looking at the others. Very good, no mistakes. And then she turned to Sad Sack. Now please try to remember, Sad Sack. It's when I say do that that you must not move. I'll try, said Sad Sack gloomily. All right, said Dotty to the others. Dotty says, do this. Dotty says, do that. None of the raggy dolls moved, except Sad Sack. Sorry, Sad Sack, said Dotty. I'm afraid you're out this time. Oh, well, sighed Sad Sack. I'm not much good at copying games. I'm not much good at copying games, said a voice. Who said that? demanded Sad Sack. Not me, said Back to Front. Not me, said Lucy. Not me, said the voice again. There's someone else up here, whispered Princess. Who? Who? Uh, moaned Lucy. Who can it be? Come out, ordered Dotty. Come out, whoever you are. Come out, whoever you are, said the voice. At once, said Dotty crossly. At once, repeated the voice. Stop repeating everything I say, said Dotty, really cross. Ah, sorry, said the voice. There was a flapping noise, and a big, brightly coloured bird appeared at one of the windows. It was a parrot. Sorry, it said again. I just love copying people. I forget how annoying it can be. The raggy doll stared in amazement. At last, Dotty spoke. Oh, um, that's all right. Um, do come in. No, thanks, said the parrot. I'd rather stay here. I've got to keep my eye on things. And he looked about, anxiously. Are you in some kind of trouble? Asked Back to Front. You can say that again. Are you in some kind of trouble? asked Sad Sack, taking the parrot at its word. Shh! What kind of trouble are you in, Mr. Parrot? Well, for a start, I'm lost. Second, I'm really hungry. And third, I've been stolen, taken prisoner, parrot-napped. Good gracious, said Dotty. How awful, said Princess. You can say that again, said the parrot. The parrot told the raggy dolls how he lived with an old sea captain and had sailed all over the world. Everything had been quite peaceful until one night the parrot was woken up by some strange noises. Before he could squawk or say anything, he was stuffed into a sack and driven off into the night. How awful, said Princess. How did you escape? asked Lucy. We, we, we must inform the p -p -p police, said Hi-Fi. First things first, said the parrot. What about something to eat? I'm really hungry. But of course, come on, we'll find something in the canteen. Ah, uh, if you don't mind, I think I'd better stay here. I'm very slow at walking, and if I fly about all over the place, I'm so colourful, they're sure to see me. Who might see you? asked Lucy, nervously. The burglars, the men who took me. They're in a tent over in that big wood. You mean the dark wood? said Lucy. Well, I don't know what you call it, but that's where they were this morning. Then we must be on our guard, said Dotty. You really ought to come in, Mr. Parrot. I'm sure the crooks won't find you in here. The parrot agreed and hid in the treehouse with Claude and Sad Sack, while the others made their way back to the factory. Florrie Fosdyke was out shopping, so there was no one in the canteen. What do parrots eat? asked Princess. We forgot to ask him. I'd no idea, said Dotty. Pity we left Claude and Sad Sack with him. They seem to know everything about food. Peanuts, said Back to Front. 
I'm sure they eat peanuts. There's peanut butter, said Lucy, with her head in a cupboard. We could make him some peanut butter sandwiches. Good thinking, said Dotty. What I don't understand, Mr. Parrot, said Sadsack, is why anyone should want to steal you. You can say that again, said the parrot. Very well. What I don't under... Uh, Excusez-moi, Sadsack, said Claude. Uh, let me explain. I have heard that a clever bird like Monsieur Parrot here is worth lots of money, n'est-ce pas? The parrot nodded. But it wasn't just me they took, he added. All the captain's valuables collected from all over the world. They took them too. Sacre bleu! Did you get, how you say, a good look at them? What, the valuables? asked Sadsack. No, the burglars, of course, said Claude impatiently. No, said the parrot. I didn't see the burglars. But I heard them. What do you mean? said Sadsack. One of them had a foreign accent, said the parrot. Dotty, Lucy, Princess, Back to Front and Hi-Fi were on their way back with the peanut butter sandwiches when they saw a van in the factory yard. Thank you, Mr. Grimes, said the stranger. And if you see my most valuable bird, you will please let me know. He doesn't sound like a sea captain, whispered Lucy. I bet he's one of the crooks, agreed Dotty. All right, said Mr. Grimes. I'm very busy, but if I do see him, where will I find you? My friend and I are camping in the woods, replied the stranger. That settles it, muttered back to front. It's them, all right. Let's make a note of the number plate and notify the police as soon as we can. Good thinking, said Dotty. In no time at all, all the Raggy Dolls were together again in the treehouse. The parrot watched as Hi-Fi contacted the police on his radio. At attention, police, he called. At attention, p -p -p police. P -p burglars camping in the dark wood. A patrolling police car heard the message. That's strange. Who could be sending us that signal? wondered the first policeman. Don't know, said the second. But I bet they're talking about the same mob who robbed the captain's cottage. Come on. The police turned on their siren and sped off. Meanwhile, the raggy dolls had decided to creep up on the crooks. At last, they found them in a clearing in the dark wood. They overheard the burglars talking. I say we should get out now. Never mind the parrot. This other stuff is worth a tidy sum. But the bird is worth a lot of money. He can't be far. Just one more search, hmm? Suddenly, he was interrupted. Stay where you are. This is the police. You are surrounded. The raggy dolls watched as the robbers were handcuffed and put in the police car. Captain! Screeched the parrot in delight. And off he flew. Back in the treehouse, the raggy dolls were munching the peanut butter sandwiches. What a day, said back to front. That bird was quite a character. You can say that again, said Sadsack. Back to front winked at the others. What a day. It was Friday morning and Mr. Grimes was very excited. He looked at the clock on the wall, and he looked at his wristwatch. Where's that postman, he thought. He's usually here by now. He went over to the window and stuck out his head, just as the postman's van drove into the factory yard. At last, he thought. And in no time at all, he'd rushed down the stairs and was quickly signing for the receipt of a large package. It's my new indoor golf set. Keen on golf, are you? Well, I've only just started. I need the practice, said Mr. Grimes. Well, good luck, said the postman cheerfully. Thanks, said Mr. Grimes. And he rushed upstairs with the package. The indoor golf set had a putter, a ball, and a circular ramp made of plastic with a hole in the middle. The idea was to knock the ball along the floor, up the little ramp, and into the hole. Mr. Grimes put down the instruction book and picked up the club. Right, 
he thought. This seems straightforward enough. Gently back with the putter and... Just as he hit the ball, the telephone rang, making him jump. The ball disappeared under the filing cabinet. Hello, he said crossly, answering the phone. Meanwhile, the raggy dolls were sitting in the reject bin, wondering what to do. Why don't we all go for a long walk? suggested Dotty. Walking is boring, said Sad Sack. <laughs> you always say that, laughed back to front. Yes, and then we quite enjoy it once we get going, added Lucy. Not always, said Sad Sack. What about some breakfast, said Princess. I'm starving. Good thinking, thought Sad Sack. The raggy dolls got to the canteen just as Florrie Fostyke was taking Mr Grimes' morning cup of coffee up to him. Florrie Fostyke had a terrible memory. Now let me see, she muttered to herself. Does Grimesy take sugar, or doesn't he? The raggy dolls watched as she left the canteen. All right, chaps, said Dotty. The coast is clear. Breakfast, here we come thought Sad Sack. Mr Grimes was on his hands and knees trying to get his golf ball out from under the filing cabinet when Florrie Fostyke entered. Why, Mr Grimes, she exclaimed, whatever is the matter? Lost ball, muttered Mr Grimes. Pass me that putter, will you? That water, said Florrie, who knew nothing about golf. The putter, said Mr Grimes, that golf club over there. Now, Florrie Fostyke had heard about golf clubs. They were usually big houses with car parks and lots of trees and grass. So she looked out of the window, a bit puzzled. I can see the gasworks, the town hall clock, and a lot of houses, but I can't see a golf club, Mr Grimes. The raggy dolls were tucking into toast and marmalade when they heard Florrie Fostyke coming back. Quick, said Dotty, let's hide. Florrie burst into the canteen, muttering to herself. I don't know what's got into Mr Grimes. He's not himself. Fancy playing golf in the office. I told him he should get some fresh air. He spends too much time in that office. I think it's affected his brain. Just then, Mr Grimes came in, carrying the indoor golf set. Florrie, he said, I'm sorry I got cross. You were quite right. I've been working too hard. In fact, everyone's been working too hard. The order books are full, productivity's up, so I've decided to give everyone the afternoon off. Here, take this indoor golf set and throw it in the reject bin. I'm off to play the real thing. The raggy dolls couldn't believe their luck. After everyone had gone, they took the indoor golf set out into the factory yard. Hooray for old Grimesy, said back to front. Now we know what to do today. What? said Sad Sack. Play golf, silly, said Dotty. That stick's a bit big, isn't it? said Lucy. It's n -n 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 not a stick, it's a p -p -p putter, said Hi Fi. Quite right, said Dotty. And all we have to do is stand on a box. The Ragged Dolls soon found a box, and one by one they took turns at trying to knock the ball into the plastic hole. Dotty went first. The ball rolled up the ramp, but then it rolled back down again. Bother, she said. Lucy and Princess didn't get close at all. Claude and Hi-Fi didn't do much better. Then it was Sad Sack's turn. He stood on the box, raised the putter high above his head, and swung at the ball with all his might. The ball shot into the air, hit the toolshed roof, bounced right up onto the factory roof, rolled down into the gutter, rolled along the gutter, down the drain pipe, out into the factory yard, right up to the plastic ramp, and into the hole. Bravo, Sad Sack! Everyone cheered. Sad Sack couldn't help grinning. Next, it was back to Front's turn. He stood on the box, holding the putter. But of course, his head was pointing the wrong way. Uh, somehow I don't think I'm going to be much good at this, he said. Someone else can have my turn. Oh, I've had an idea. The ragged dolls watched as he walked towards the tool shed. Poor back to front, said Princess. Do you think he's upset? I don't think so, said Dotty. 
I wonder what his idea is, thought Sad Sack. The raggy dolls all took turns again, but it was too difficult standing on a box with the big putter. They were just about to give up when they heard back to front calling from the tool shed. Hey, everybody, come and see what I've made. Whatever can it be, thought Lucy. Back to front stood proudly by a big pile of cardboard boxes. On one of the boxes, he painted a clown's face. It's very nice, said Dotty, but what's it for? Sad Turk gave me the idea when he hit the ball up on the roof, explained back to front. I thought, why not? Let's make a crazy golf course. Here, let me show you. Back to front disappeared behind the clown's face and the raggy dolls heard a click and a rumble of a ball rolling. Moments later, a marble popped out of the clown's mouth and onto the floor. What a splendid idea, said Dotty. Well done, back to front. Soon, all the raggy dolls were busy cutting up the cardboard boxes, gluing and painting, making different crazy obstacles. They made a windmill, a train, a helter-skelter, a seesaw, a bridge, and even a loop-the-loop. -loop. Each one was tested with a marble and then carried out into the yard. At last, the crazy golf course was ready. Oh, dear, said Lucy. We can't all use Mr. Grimes' big putter. What shall we do? May we, said Claude. Also, I think it will break some marbles, Nisba. But back to front had thought of that. No problem, he said. I've made each of us a wooden putter, our size, and a special one for me that goes sideways. <laughs> for the rest of the day, the raggy dolls played crazy golf. They made up teams, held championships, and had a wonderful time. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, dolls like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog. Not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs. Stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls.